And we're live. What is parapsychology? Is that like the psychology of phantoms and ghosts? And yeah, it's it's the study of the you know what isn't uh, readily explicable uh, scientifically. He's a really interesting I guy, Stanley, because he's like he does he studies this stuff scientifically. So it could be anything from reincarnation to telepathy to psychic healing to all these sorts of things. Now he's, he's like scientific. A yeah, he's he's the original <laughs> Ghostbuster. I mean, he's eighty three now, um, but back in the day, he was the guy who would be on the Johnny Carson show, the Tonight Show with the amazing Kreskin, and Kreskin would be doing his spoon bending, <laughs> mind reading stuff, and Stanley would be the scientist saying, "Well, you know, let's try." You know, if the, they would have Stanley on there to explain what was happening or to um, debunk. You know, debunk it. Yeah, exactly. So, it, and but, oh. sorry, go ahead. I was gonna. I feel like my question asking is on a third grade level, but you believe in ghosts? That's what I'm getting from this. Me personally, I'm uh, no, I've never had any experience with ghosts. Okay. No, but I certainly believe that there are. You know, I I think that we in in Western science um, make the mistake of thinking that the only things that exist are the things that we see through our particular lenses, and I think that trips us up a lot. We're like, you know, we're like a kid with a flashlight who thinks, you know, things don't exist except where I shine my flashlight. Yeah. What do you think is a good example of something that kind of escapes the bound of our flashlight, so to speak, that is um, out there that we can't prove? placebo right how does placebo work nobody's ever explained it and yet it's included in every scientific experiment that's been done in the last 50 years uh, at least in in medicine right um that's a huge effect the color of the pill affects the response of people to it and and on levels that are are not even conscious on the levels of how white blood cells respond for example which, you know, you can't consciously control. And yet that's affected by something like placebo and whether the doctor is a man or a woman and healing, rates of healing are affected by whether or not uh, the window in your hospital room looks out onto trees or onto a, a wall. You know, there are all sorts of things that we can't explain. Hypnosis. How does hypnosis work? There are hundreds of... Um, Cases of, of major surgery that are done with no anesthesia at all other than hypnosis. How the hell does that happen? Nobody knows. Is that true? I had sure. never heard of, like, I I always assumed hypnosis was mostly bunk since every time I watch it, it's like some asshole convincing a bunch of people that they're having sex on a, a, a stage in front of a bunch of drunk idiots laughing at them. Like, I never thought it was real. No, hypnosis is real. It's, it's something that's difficult to study and therefore uh, there's not a lot of a huge literature but there's a significant literature particularly of things like surgery done under hypnosis the thing about hypnosis is that um, people have different uh, levels of what's called hypnotic ability so and that appears to be largely um, genetic uh, runs in families so you know you could have uh, five people and do the same technique with five of them. One of them might have a strong um, effect and the other four might be left completely, you know, like nothing happened. So when you see those stage hypnotists, before the cameras go on, they do screening of the audience. They'll have everyone stand up and, you know, close their eyes and imagine that there's a a breeze blowing on their forehead and then imagine the breeze getting stronger and stronger and stronger and they'll notice that some people in the audience are leaning forward because <laughs> they're compensating for the breeze that they're Just imagining. Just a bunch of rubes <laughs> leaning <laughs> forward <laughs> right into the ploy. <laughs> so yeah, wow. so they'll see those people who are leaning forward. Then the cameras go on and they'll say, I need some volunteers and they'll point to the people that they already know have high hypnotic ability. So that's... So there is a scam going on, but it's not the hypnosis. It, it's the way it, it by, appears that they're choosing randomly. I think by high hypnotic ability, you mean gullibility. Yeah. No, it's it's not gullibility. It's ability. Yeah. You know what I think of it is? It, it sounds like someone who's susceptible to a placebo. Like it, it, to me, they're kind of hand right. in hand. You know, like if you right. can convince me to stop smoking, I don't smoke through hypno hypnosis, then. 
What if we could convince you to start smoking through hypnosis? Right? Well, that's, that's called the, advertising. I want to see some destructive uh, <laughs> oh uh, hypnotism. That's what I want to see. I, I, now, I remember when they had the, the hypnotism expert come on, like the Stern Show. He suggested that smarter people were more difficult to hypnotize. So they always get a real moron to come in when they convince him, you know, his dick has fallen off or, or that he's yeah, actually a woman or something. That's not true. It no? has nothing. It has no relation with intelligence. It's a genetic trait. And in fact, uh, there's good reason to believe that it had a strong evolutionary um, benefit. So it's something that has been um, sort of, uh, you know, selected for in terms of Darwinian evolution because... You know, the thing, the thing about you guys are, are framing it as gullibility, but the thing about placebo is the effects are real. So if I can give you a sugar pill that will make your blood pressure go down and you're going to live five years longer, that's an advantage. That's not that you're stupid. That's that you've got a self-healing capacity that other people don't have. And if you imagine our ancestors living in hunter-gatherer tribes where there were no you know, anti, you know, blood pressuring, lowering, you know, pills or whatever, uh, that would have helped you survive longer if the shaman could, you know, blow in your face and blow some smoke and, you know, make some weird noises. And that would convince you that, I mean, voodoo death, voodoo death is real. People believe they're going to die, then they die. So it's not, you know, it's not about gullibility. It's about a way that the brain works that can have significant But they have to advantage. believe that first, right? Yeah, I feel like I'm sorry. Sure. It, it's not gullibility to me. It's a mindset, right? Like, it, I wouldn't say that stupid people believe in God, even though they're buying mm. into something from which there is no physical evidence or that can't be observed. Um, some people are just more faith based. And somehow hypnotism and believing in God sounds similar to me. You know, some people are just more apt to believe that this will work and then it does. Yeah. Yeah. Seems like it could have been a real advan advantageous thing to have, uh, like early humanity, like tribal gods and whatnot, like being able to convince yourself that you're being healed from your rock wound or the saber tooth bite or whatever the fuck they were doing back then. Like just being able to believe that you were getting better and then having that actually take effect. Like I never thought of that's really interesting. I never thought never of it as that like a, a placebo tie in. Yeah, that changes a lot of my perspective on it. Have you ever been hypnotized? Uh, well, yeah, yeah, I've, I've been hypnotized. Why is it such yeah. a hard thing to, I know why, because hypnotism is a spectrum, right? I have talked to people who've been hypnotized yeah. who say that it's almost like an out of body experience and other people who say, no, it's just kind of a like half nap where you're open your mind to suggestion. And, and yeah, that's yeah, why I that's feel why like I, your answer was yeah. hard. You're like, was I hypnotized? Exactly. That's it. I, I, first of all, I was I was trying to remember when and where to be sure I wasn't, you know, imagining it. Um, I may be hypnotized right now for all I know. Um, but yeah, I, I do remember when it was when I was in graduate school and uh, I did some hypnotherapy classes. And um, yeah, and, and you're right, it's a spectrum. Because I was thinking, what's well, not like what you guys are imagining, at least it wasn't in my case. It was just like deep relaxation. Don't lump me in but, with these fools. Nobody, <laughs> <laughs> nobody had me barking like a dog or, or pretending to be fucking a chair or anything. You know, I don't need to be hypnotized for that. No. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on the chair. Yeah. Well, on the uh, on the Stern show, they uh, co they convinced Sal that he di that his dick had fallen off, that it was gone, and so he's just screaming, "My my my dick! My dick is gone! I need it!" It was that that was great. So I really enjoy I, that. That's the kind of hypnotism that I enjoy. I want to see someone. Yeah, the uh, fake kind on the Stern show. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. That's much more entertaining. You I know, went that's, to a, that's actually a disease um, that affects people throughout Asia called koro k o k o r o. Oh, and time? it's the belief that your oh. that your dick is falling off or being um uh sort of shrinking into your body. Jesus Christ. And it, yeah, and it leads to like people killing who they believe are witches because they've been, you know, oh you've you've afflicted me with coro and they, they go kill these people. It's yeah, look it up. It's crazy. When I was this this an undergrad in college, yeah, now I went to a hypnotism show and uh it was very powerful. This is like nineteen year old me. 
And uh, they got, like, girls to kiss guys. They got a guy to think he was a chicken. They got someone to be, like, deathly afraid of lightning. But we were indoors and it wasn't raining. And and I came away from that, young Woody, thinking that, like, holy smokes, this hypnotism is fantastic. That This guy has the ability to, like, he's like Xavier. Is that the guy from X-Men? Who's the one in the wheelchair? Xavier. Yeah, yeah. Patrick Stewart. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> so, uh, so one of my plans was rather than study and learn the material, I could hypnotize my professors <laughs> and get better grades. And it didn't go anywhere. It, it was complete failure. They really that didn't. How do you <laughs> initiate that? How do you ini- pr- excuse me, Doctor Waters? Come here. You're getting very yeah. sleepy. He's gonna be like, get the fuck out of here. What are your office hours? F. I'm gonna need six minutes of complete silence. <laughs> 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 uh, yes yeah, yeah, i've never seen work. it in action never actually seen somebody get hypnotized my grandma uh tried to get hypnotized to quit smoking which apparently is reasonably common in the hypnosis world uh as far as reasons quitting smoking it didn't work for her but i guess it wouldn't continue if it didn't work for some people in hindsight i think the people i saw succumb to a social pressure right they're on a stage there's 600 people watching and they're saying cluck like a chicken and they can either disappoint everyone and be like, no, or they can cluck like a chicken to claps and laughs and celebration. Yeah, but it's not laughs at like, look at how clever that chicken is. My (laughs) God, I'm going to high five him after this. It's look at that fucking dolt up there. Maybe so. Being manipulated by that puppeteer. Your alternative is... Look at how uncool Taylor is. Look at how, like, disappointing I am in Taylor's, like, just unfun folding his arms saying no. That's why people I, did it. I would it. prefer that. I would, I would love to see a hypnotist go up there and just bomb. Like, he keeps telling them to do all this stupid shit, and they're just like, fuck you. You no. say you prefer that, and Don't you know. might. In a way that he can't call you out, like, become a different animal. <laughs> and so he can't say that you're, you're BSing. <laughs> And he can't. <laughs> he but, starts oh, getting great. scared. He's like, "All right, you're a human again." You're, you're like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> so like, this, this never happened to me before. <laughs> I know you prefer, and, and, and maybe that's true. But hypothetical eighteen-year-old Kyle might have been much more susceptible to the pressures of the crowd. Perhaps I, that's true. You never I, know. I, I, I can't. I can't somewhere. know that without some sort of time machine. But mm-hmm. I, whenever I see the hypnotism, I'm thinking in my head. I'm like. I, I, I think the same thing I think when I see those crazy uh, televangelist churches when, like, the he's got the line of people he's going to heal, and he's like, heal! And the person's like, ah! Like, like being, like, thrown across the room by invisible, like, Yoda force or something that this guy just put on him. And I'm thinking, like, no, no, no. Those people are just dancing for the crowd. They're, they're just yeah. caught up in the moment. Have you ever uh, been to a church like that? Yeah. I Yeah, I've been to one of those, too. When I was, like, seven, I spent the night at a friend's house, and they made me go to church them the next morning. And I thought it was going to be, like, the church my parents made me go to, where it was, like, sit there and shut up and just listen to the guy do his thing. But <laughs> as soon as we got in there, I could tell some vibe was off. The teacher, <laughs> like, 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 took his, uh, his jacket off, like, threw it to the side. Like, it wasn't the time to fuck around. Christ doesn't deal with blazers. We're, we're rolling up the sleeves here, getting like, wrist deep in faith. And then people, like, kept, like, dancing their way up to the front, like, shaking their hands like that. And he wouldn't do, like, the hit thing, but he'd kind of, like, like grab them by the shoulders and go, like, oh, Lord. And then, like, kind of push them on their way to the side. With, like, and they, they were asking me, they're like, Taylor, you want to go to the front? You want to go to the front with the preacher, you know? No, no, I think I just want to go home. <laughs> Have you ever here. been to Have you ever been to a church where they start uh, the people start speaking in tongues? Yes. Yeah. I've that, that that makes me very uncomfortable. It. it makes me very uncomfortable. They would just out of nowhere, you know, this this guy next to me who I know is like a vi- volunteer fireman, and he is not communing with God or anything like that right now, and he's just and everybody's like, yeah, pointing at him like, yeah, they're like hyping him up, like it's it's so it's so silly. It was unsettling for a child. I remember that. It is. The the noises they make, like they're not like speaking like oh da ba da ba da ba da ba da ba da ba da No, like, it's, it's not like Latin a or kind anything. of semi screaming and like repetitive noises and high pitches. It's it's upsetting if you're like if some good old, old boy from Franklin County, Georgia started speaking Latin out of nowhere in church, I'd be like, Holy shit. All right, all right, this is legit right here because he doesn't but no, he's just it's just gibberish. He's just making it up as he goes along. Yeah. 
That'd be a good way for God to show tongues is real. Make him do it in Latin or some yeah. other best language that that's I had to That's what the take devil does. That, that's what Satan does. <laughs> yeah, and all those exorcist movies, they you know they start they they're communing with the uh, you know the person in Latin. Yeah, yeah. 